Hi there. I wanted to make a video about how I do weathering, especially on armor and helmets. Um, and I wanted to do it all in one video, but I really realized that a part of weathering that's the most important part to me is the intention. And if you do weathering for, with a reason behind what you're doing, um, it'll often come out great no matter what technique you use, whether you do it how I do it or some other technique. Um, so I wanted to go over some of that stuff. Now, weathering is the process of taking something that's shiny and new and giving it like a lived in look. So here's an unpainted and weathered chest plate. And here's my other one that, uh, you know, it's, it's dirty, it's scratched, it's dinged. Um, it looks like it's been around a little bit. And to me, Star Wars always had great lived in, like believable props. And to me, like the world I lived in as a kid and do now, there's new things that are, are new cars and there's old beat up pickup trucks. Um, there are brand new um, tools and there are tools that have been handed down through three generations and they all have a different look about them. And Star Wars had that look, like Luke's speeder was missing a fender and things were dirty and dusty and it just gave a really good contrast to that world of the Empire that was so shiny and bright. Um, and that is something I've always wanted to create on my props, if possible. Some things need to look shiny and new, but some things get to be dirty and grimy and great. So um, you can look to inspiration from... Um, from things that are in the real world, like an old construction helmet is a great example of something that's like kind of white and plastic but gets dirty and doesn't get very cleaned once it's been around for a while. Um, you can look at old objects, old tools. Um, in Star Wars, often we have, if we're recreating a specific type of prop, um, we have those references that you can use. So look to those references and see what they did and how they did it, and it may give you some great ideas for weathering. The various prop Community forums are an amazing resource for finding, you know, really good reference um, on costumes for their weathering. Um, some people have poured through all the screen grabs, which you can get at places like Star Wars Screen Grabs, um, where it has sort of every few seconds a photo. I used um, some of those to see what the back of the armor looked like on my 327 Star Core um, and, and kind of duplicate that weathering style there. Um, people have really elaborately looked at certain props like the E11 blaster. My first one, I just kind of dry brushed it silver, not really researching it much. Um, now I know that things like these T-tracks are supposed to be black because they were plastic, as was the handle. And the scope is kind of brassy because it was a brass scope, tank scope, put on that original prop. And so you can really get it to look like those original props. Um, People like post a lot of that research from obscure, you know, reference guides or when some of the props have gone on exhibition tours, people have gotten great photos of them. I even discovered something that no one else had and posted about it in one of those forums where a lot of the clone troopers in Revenge of the Sith have this kind of, I call it the clone dome smudge and like these two little lines here. And I just added them to this helmet. You don't have to be that specific, but it's fun to see what people discovered. For example, animated style clone armor. Um, they have that kind of mottled gray texture that people get with sandpaper and some other te techniques of layering paint. Um, for movie clones, you tend to paint it and then add weathering um, color after. And for example, references are uh, on this helmet. Um, phase two clones have this kind of rust coloration only around this detail on the helmet so I would want to recreate that just because it looks right and the the weathering to me looks like it has a little bit of brown in it it's not just black it's kind of has a warmth to it like grime from the real world um if you're doing a very specific prop like this Bo-Katan helmet I did um she has very particular weathering with very particular marks um in the Mandalorian and I wanted to recreate that pattern and so I, I really closely stuck with the weathering but most of the time I'm doing things that are a little bit more random and personal and I'm able to have fun like just thinking in my own mind like what caused that and why was it there um, so when you're doing weathering it should really tell a story and it should be done for a reason and done with intention. And when I say story, it's not like you're thinking of a particular situation. You can do that, but it's more of like, why did this happen? I mean, weathering in general 
happens differently on the high points and low points. So the high points of armor may get more scratches and marks from hitting things. The low points may hold grime in a way that can't be easily cleaned out, like right along these edges. And um, you're not gonna have a lot of grime on the high points and you're not gonna have a lot of damage on the low points that are protected because it's gonna be hard for an object to come in there and, and do any kind of, leave any kind of mark in there. So on like a clone helmet, like this deep area will hold grime, but it's just gonna be hard for any thing to get in there and make a mark. Um, similarly, you wanna think about what the object is and how it's worn. So for example, this is a piece of knee armor and while it may get some marks on the sides, it's gonna get a majority of its damage on the bottom edges and on the, the anywhere that it's gonna interact with the world while being worn. So if you're taking a knee um, to take a shot, if you're falling and skidding across your knees, if you're tumbling down a hillside, you're gonna take so many marks on the front bottom edges of this armor that it should have more than anywhere else on the armor. And similarly, the directionality, like I make a lot of vertical lines on this because of skidding and scraping in a line. If I have a piece of shoulder armor, I may put some horizontal marks from hitting doorways, out of, coming out of vehicles, or going around corners. Um, and then anywhere that that shoulder armor protects, like the top of the upper arm, it probably should have very few marks at all, but it can have grime. So think about what you're doing. If it's drip marks, if it's the color of the weathering, if it's a blaster scorch, it might be more matte and black. If it's um, an edged weapon, it may have a different type of look on the armor. Just consider why it's there and what's happening, and you'll have a better kind of weathering look overall. Um, your scratch marks and things should continue across, you know, surfaces, if that makes sense. So like something might go from one thing to another, but skip that little dip where it wouldn't be able to do any damage. Um, there's a couple of these on the Bo-Katan helmet. You would want, if this was hit by some kind of edge weapon, it probably wouldn't go down, out, and across. It just skips that whole low area and continues to the next high point. Um, high spots will protect areas right next to them from damage. So just think about what would cause it. Um, on on this clone helmet, I thought of like, maybe there was a, a sort of frag grenade that blew up and it was just to the side of the helmet and it's spread out across. Um, I, I like to think of, you know, on, on a helmet, you may get blown backwards and skid across the floor or drop your helmet. So I have a lot on the back that tells that kind of story and intention. Um, do what, what makes sense um, to that object and what might happen to it. Um, like you don't want to have spatter marks all over the whole thing, but I will use some spatter on my boots and shins and a, a few spatter marks get up to the knees from stepping in puddles. Um, give give um, things that interact with the ground a different color. Like I add a little bit more brown paint when I'm doing boots and shins because they're going to get a little bit more mud and actual dirt than the helmet will. Um, so just try and give, you know, give things a reason, do it, do it with a, a, a purpose and have fun doing it. I wanted to show a few examples of, um, things to avoid when doing weathering. And this isn't to call out these specific sets of armor. It's just great examples for, um, things that I am guilty of from time to time. And it's something it's hard to break away from, but it's better to see like why it's something to avoid. Um, so f one of the main things that happens a lot is you start weathering and you get weathering and it's having, it's just it's going everywhere and it's looking great. It's looking grimy and it's looking perfect. And when you're done, there's too much weathering. And that's when you have just weathering everywhere um, for no reason. I mean, even a, a garbage truck is cleaner on top than the bottom. Even And that thing just interacts with garbage all day. So if something's going to be grimy, it can be, but it, it rarely is every single place all over the whole thing evenly in a general modeled way. Um, you know, if, if the armor is white, you want some white to show here and there so that the, the weathering looks even better. Um, so that can happen. And luckily the technique I use, which is this acrylic washing, um, 
I have about five or six minutes to take a wet rag and step back from it and then just wipe it all down to where it's it's mostly reduced and I can come back in and hit it in some specific spots. I do it most of the time. I go a little too far and I back off and then I do a little bit more and then I wipe it out and then I do a little bit more and now it's got these layers and so it actually can work to overdo it as long as you can pull it back a little bit. One other problem is people will do just perfect 45 degree slash marks all over the whole armor and it's just such a easy thing for your hand to do because you don't want to do perfectly vertical you don't want to go horizontal so 45 feels right which is great as long as they're not all 45 degrees um, and so you'll see that like did, what kind of fight was this trooper in where they got just perfect 45 degree angle attacks across their entire armor so vary up those angles. Some should be a little bit off of vertical. Some can even be horizontal, like I do on my shoulder from hitting the doorway, you know, like things that make sense. And even occasional random ones can just be completely horizontal. Um, another thing that I see a lot, especially with paint chipping um, stripes, is that people will do just even spots, equidistant, all over the whole thing where some should be small some should be big um, some should areas should just have nothing some should have a lot i mean it, it the only way to get an even pattern of similar blotches all over is to be doing it intentionally or to you know walk into a wall of evenly spaced nails and get a mark on them it just doesn't happen even a shotgun filled with gravel would create an irregular pattern of marks on an object so try and vary it up, size and distance, cluster some, leave space, but doing a mark every inch and a half all over the entire thing and all of them are about the size of fingertip will just have a look that doesn't look realistic. It's not believable for how things um, interact with the world. Um, also, for me, I don't like using the airbrush on weathering. A lot of people love it and swear by it and they get great effects with it. But to me, um, airbrushes have too fine of a mist. And so you'll get these really soft looking marks and they'll sometimes couple them with dark marks, but um, it just doesn't always look like how things get weathered. Airbrushes are really good for doing like sun fading on high points, but for um, actual weathering marks, it's a little bit too soft. So I have a better, better look um, that I get with paint brushes and wiping away to get sort of like an irregular soft look where someone may use an airbrush for that. But um, I just find that it, it airbrush is just a little bit too smooth and too fine to really give that kind of look I'm looking for. It's great for like a couple blaster marks, but use it sparingly and it will just look a lot better if most of your weathering is a little bit more irregular and rough. Um, so that's it, that's part one. Um, part two, I'll be taking some of this armor and doing the various steps to turn it from like ready to weather all the way up to something that looks a little bit more lived in and and uh, and ready to be trooped in. So um, be sure and watch that second part if you're curious how I use acrylic watches. Um, if not, just have fun and make things that look lived in and worn and good luck. <laughs>